All right, this is a video on factoring special cases with an introduction and some examples. And in particular, we are going to be factoring perfect square trinomials and difference of two squares trinomials. This, these are, you can think of as kind of shortcuts or efficiency tips. And if you forget them, you can always just follow the general rules for factoring quadratic trinomials. But if you notice these patterns, you're going to save yourself just a ton of time. So I really suggest that you, that you get this, that you, that you learn it and you practice it. So a little reminder of perfect squares. I will just show an example here. If we have x plus a, for example, squared, that is definitely not equal to x squared plus a squared. Okay, that's the biggest math mistake of all time in high school, I think. But it is equal to x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So you double a to get the middle term and you square a to get the final term. Okay, and so if you see a pattern like this, where the, where the constant term is a perfect square, and you find the square root of it, and you double it, and you can get the middle term, then you know you're working with a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and then lastly, the difference of two squares, if we have x plus a times x minus a, if you multiply those out using the FOIL process, the outers and the inners cancel, and we end up with x squared minus a squared. So these are nice because these are the few quadratic expressions where they're binomials, okay? And we don't have a, a middle x term, okay? And a squared will just be a perfect square number, okay? So let's go ahead and give these a try. x squared plus 10x plus 25, so things to look for. Is that a perfect square? It is, it's five squared. And is that five doubled? It is. So this is going to go straight to x plus five quantity squared, and we're done. As easy as that, okay? Next one, just got harder, right? And one reason it got harder is because that nine out there. But nine's a perfect square too, and so, so is 25. This 30, where did that come from? Because we want, this, this is five squared, right? But this isn't a two times five. It's not the doubled version of five. So I think the nine is, is confusing things a little bit. But if you have a coefficient in front of the x that's not one, we can still, we can still work with it. What's the square root of nine x squared? Three x. What's the square root of 25? Five. Let's foil it out, see if we get that 30. Three x times three x gives us the nine x squared. And five times five gives us the 25. Let's do adders and inners. 3x times 5 is 15x, and 5 times 3x is 15x also. So those add together to give us the 30. So that does check out. So we have a 3x plus 5 squared. That would be our final answer right there. Difference of two squares. Okay, these, these are always kind of fun because I see them and I know it's going to be just so easy because I remember the rule. Okay, so this is just going to be x plus seven times x minus seven. So difference of two squares, subtraction means difference, and we have a perfect square, x squared is x times x, and 49 is seven times seven. Okay, so just, just notice those. Um, don't try to rush through it and just try to and use your normal factoring method. Try to look for patterns and be efficient. This works also when we have a non one in front of the x squared, so look for those as well. 36 is a perfect square, so is 16, so is x squared, and we have a difference right there. That's what subtraction means. So let's try this, and we'll do a quick check to make sure it works. 6x plus 4, 6x minus 4, so difference of two squares. And I'm just going to check the outers and the inners to make sure they cancel out, because I know the first and the lasts work. So adders, minus 24x, plus 24x, those cancel out to give us a, a 0x squared, because this is really, or 0x, this is really 30, 36x squared plus 0x minus 16. All right, so it looks like we got the final answer. That's a good place to stop.